afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be. Here's another uh, issue of Fight Review, and this time we're delighted to have with us Jessica Klimke of Canada, the under 57 kilo category gold medal winner from our last tournament in Dusseldorf. It's a very um, warm welcome to you, Jessica. Hi. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good, 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 thanks. Tell us a little bit about what you are up to at the moment. Um, pretty much everything has resumed back here in Canada. So I'm training twice a day again. Um, and just sort of now with the confirmation of Budapest, just looking forward to that. And um, yeah, keeping, keeping that in mind and getting my goals together. Yeah. Well, it, it's a first round match for Jessica Pinto of Canada in the Osaka Grand Slam against Tian Hongjie of China. They're about to take to this time. It's not the first time that Jessica, Jessica's fought uh, Tian. In, for, in fact, they fought in uh, China, Hu Hauta, earlier in the year where Jessica came out the winner. So maybe, Jessica, that's not such a bad thing. No, not a, not a bad first fight at a, at a Grand Slam. So to be familiar with her is uh, a good thing. I like this, this typical spin around that you do. Uh, it's uh, pretty instilled in me. It's a habit that I can't really shake. <laughs> yeah, I remember we saw that for the first time in Miami at the Cadet World Championships. And you've been doing it ever since. Ever since, yeah. <laughs> nice that you both got to grips quickly here. You know, the yep. Are keen on making sure that you grip up very, very quickly. Yeah, she's pretty strong on the grips. Uh, she's kind of hard to get past that to like enter attacks and stuff. So I know um, I really have to control that from the start if I want to uh, enter on her. I mean, a lot of people watching will know you and will have seen you. They won't know uh, Tian. I've, I've watched a good few of her contests and that mm. little Kurnagi is something that she likes as well. And we, you, you were aware of that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And she, as you can see, like she's, she's already entered a couple of talks and I'm, I'm a little behind. So here I am trying, trying to catch up on that. Yeah, that's a really, really strong Ojigari attack that she was um, quick enough to turn off. And there was a, a, a moment there when it looked as though it would be a score. She managed to turn yeah. onto the front. So that, that kind of forward backwards thing is, is really important for me to train right now, just because I know everyone is, um, you know, expecting the, the forward throw, the, the drop Cianagi. So uh, I was pretty happy with that exchange, actually. Yeah, that Ojigari is one of your strong suits, isn't it? It's a powerful yeah. suit. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, I do work a lot of Ashiwaza in training. It's just in tournament, sometimes it's hard to make that link because I'm, I'm pretty, you know, anxious to just throw in the drop. But I'm, I'm learning to be patient because I know my Ashiwaza can be yeah. pretty strong. And there was a brief opportunity there for the Sangaku, but it didn't yeah. materialize. But I yeah. suppose that's what we're working on as well. Yeah, well, well, you know pretty quick if you're going to get your hooks in or not for that, so I decided to save some energy, I guess. Yeah, because right now I'm not sure who is the more nervous. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, she, she's doing a good job with the gripping. Um, she's pretty, uh, she's kind of going, she's matching my pace definitely with with the grips which is something that can be a little difficult yeah it all looks um pretty even without anyone getting the, the real upper hand and looking really yeah. threatened yeah i see the little ashy was a foot taps just to keep it you know yeah keep it. definitely that that's important just to kind of keep her on her toes and see if there's an opening but you can see she's pretty far away from me so if they're that far, I'm not gonna, I shouldn't really be attempting a, a forward throw if they're that far. Sometimes yeah. I do out of habit, but um, yeah. yeah, the Ashiwaza is better 
you know, if they're if they're that far. And that one was on, on her part a yeah. little bit. Faster. The last two attacks from her, the Serenagi, and that may be little Seatoshi there, that also yeah. looked a little bit of a, a bit of a gap. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not rare that people are, are attacking on me, but it's not, you know, I obviously like to have that advantage of always putting in the attacks first. So, when, uh, just the fact that she is attacking kind of uh, changes the pace. Like, it, it, it informs me that I just have to go, like, faster and faster. Yeah, you have had a really, really good tempo. You seem yeah. to have a good... A mental clock for knowing uh, when to attack, especially early on in the contest. Yeah. And if the contest is even and it goes l later on, yeah. some the nerves kind of take over and you yeah. throw, you know, one or two when maybe you don't don't have to. I think this is the first time that yeah, it's just going to look a little bit as though. Yeah. Yeah, really definitely. That's something I struggled with. Like my my, oh, that was pretty good. Um, yeah, definitely my frequency of attacks is something I struggled with entering the, the senior um, level just because my attacks weren't as strong because I was younger. So I, I did, you know, get a lot of penalties for that. But over the years, I've learned more about like the timing and the pace. And I, I've been seeing a lot less of uh, Cheetos for, for false attacks and, and things like that. Yeah, up to this point, uh, neither of, of the pair have looked, you know, that uh, threatening. But if I had to say who was most comfortable at this point, I'd say that, that you were. You haven't come under any kind of uh, serious yeah, threat. No. At, at this point, like, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I just know it's a matter of time before I kind of break her down. And that's sort of what I'm doing with with the grips, using the feet, like constantly being ahead. And I don't think there was a point that I was ever worried. Yeah. I just I just knew I haven't found my moment yet. I think you, you mentioned the word patience earlier on. And if this, this is really good as illustration here, where you yeah. haven't committed a single error. You've been no. patient. Making yeah. sure you keep the right rate of attacks without coming under any threat from her. Yeah. That's a strong one there. And again, like you say, you know when you're going to get your hooks in or not. And there's not a great deal you know, happening here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I was uh, winning with Oazari, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try probably a little harder. <laughs> yeah, a bit more determined. Yeah. I think the last contest you had with her also went into golden score. I haven't seen that one. Yeah. No, she's definitely, you can see, you know, she's constantly breaking my grips, which is something that's frustrating to me, but I, I think I, right here, I, I yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a, a beautiful entry. I've seen that uh, on the replay a few times, and I wanted yeah. to see it on the replay um, because at our angle isn't, isn't the best for seeing the landing of the shoulder, part of the back, and down on, on the side. Yeah. But the Peru happens to be in the perfect position for seeing that. Everardo Garcia from Mexico, he, yeah. he, he, uh, he, he catches the landing and he, he gives the score uh, yeah. for that. I mean, uh, even if it wasn't a score, I wasn't stressed in this fight. It was just a matter of uh, breaking down her grips. Her, her attacks were never super threatening to me. So I, I was able to just sort of, you know, be patient with it and and feel it out. Right, so, I mean, people at home are gonna to wanna to look over and over and over again at this, because this is a lovely Seotoshi entry, even, even if you um, look at it yourself, you're gonna yep. see that to the, to the perfect uh, position, the finish, yep. all that you would want it to be. This is a yep. great. Yeah, just the kind of little back steps I'm doing, I'm just sort of testing where her momentum will be and if it's the right timing and it's one of the only times in the in the fight where i you know did something with 
I'm controlling one of her arms. You know, I didn't decide to grip up with both because she was pretty good at, um, I guess, uh, controlling me when I had two, two hands on her gi, so. Yeah, but that was the perfect opportunity there. Yeah. There was a, a moment, I guess, when you just do things instinctively and the person has to be in the right position. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Here, she, she kind of squares up, you know, you can see, yeah. Right, okay, so the, 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 the scoring part of it is actually better viewed from the referee's position. So he's yeah. in a good position. He, 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 he gives that and you come away with uh, that win. We were talking about what it's like to have or you, you, you've mentioned what it's like to have that kind of contest uh, first up. And as you walk off the mat here, you, you've gone into golden score. You haven't had, had come under really uh, a, 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 any threat, but that's better than any warm-up you could have had in, in the warm-up area. Oh, for sure, yeah. Definitely the first fight for me, I tried to take a lot of the pressure off and just really, it's just a matter of getting into the flow for the day and, and trying to like instill good habits that I can carry throughout for the rest of the day. So fast grips, using my feet a lot, you know, keeping a good rate of, uh, of attacks and just being kind of patient. And that's sort of, uh, after a fight like that, uh, it's, I'm feeling pretty confident for, for the upcoming fights. Let's see if you can share something with people at home who haven't competed at that kind of level. Yeah. Um, Osaka Grand Slam, one of the biggest competitions in the world, but this, this particular year actually came the year after that you'd already won it. So were you looking forward to Japan? Because a lot of people don't like competing in Japan. Yeah. They find it really difficult. Well, what about you? Um... For me, uh, there was a little bit of stress entering this one after after coming off of, of winning the, the previous year, but um, I honestly enjoy fighting the, the Japanese style. I'm a very, you know, I, I grip my sleeve and lapel. I'm not so unorthodox, so um, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to shy away from, from fighting, fighting the Japanese. So it, it's actually like a fun challenge for me. Um, and the atmosphere is really good. It, it's mm. exciting, but it's like calm in a weird way. So um, I'm always looking forward to, to fighting there. And the, the other thing is that your record against the Japanese has improved incredibly. I mean, the yeah. first you know, few outings with them, like yeah. many people, ended up you know not so well but mm -hmm. in recent past you've knocked off a few of those people who've defeated you before and yeah. the last occasions you've defeated Yoshida who is their go-to go-to fighter yeah so I think it was uh 2015 or 2016 and it was my first time fighting Tokyo it was in Tokyo at the time so the Tokyo Grand Slam and my first fight was with Yoshida and I, I wasn't too because I was new I wasn't too familiar with who she was but uh, obviously after fighting her I was so I, I lost to her actually back to back my first two Tokyo Grand Slams and then I think uh, by the third or fourth year we we matched up again in, uh, in Osaka and I was able to uh, pull that off really well I was really uh, happy with my performance with her She's definitely been, um, you know, a good gauge of how my level has improved over the last three or four years. So that was really, really nice to, to come away with a win. Yeah, I, I always look at the record of the fighters that I'm talking to, how, how they um, match up over their careers against Japanese fighters. You may get one that yep. you put the number on or they may have that number on you, but you beat the rest. Mm -hmm. Or the other round, you beat that one, but you lose the rest. But you've got a really good record now. The recent pass has been really good against uh, all of them, except uh, Funakubo. I think you need to... Yeah, yeah Funakubo, she, she's definitely, she has a really good gripping game. And she, I know that she fights uh, from a very good strategic standpoint against me. It's... Um, 
she's working the Nawaza and she's she's very good on, on the ground, probably one of the best in the in the division. Mm-hmm. So she's working on the ground, her grip game is is really good and she's able to sort of um kind of I guess calm me down strategically in terms of when she's sort of entering her attacks. But um yeah, I'm not sure when the next time we'll match up is, but I I think, you know, I when someone's fighting strategically against me, it's just sort of I have to match that and find a find another strategy against them. So we we've mentioned the uh, gold in a summer of 2018, and at the moment you are the current gold medalist for the International Judo Federation at its last event that we held in Düsseldorf. Since yeah. then, we, we, we've cancelled everything. So there's no one else. This is you. You're the last person to win. Uh, how was Düsseldorf uh, for you? Well, um, Düsseldorf was really important for me to, uh, you know, compete well there because the weekend, two weeks before, was the Paris Grand Slam, and I really wasn't happy with with my performance there. Um, I thought I would do a lot better. So between Paris and Dusseldorf, I did a lot of um, reflecting on on what I can change in a, in a short short period of time and really it, I didn't change too much it was just changing the strategy on which I approach the fights you know changing the frequency of of how I attack and the frequency of my grips and stuff like that so um, Dusseldorf was was really good for me it was my goal to go in there and win I I didn't um, think that uh, it was impossible for me. So I, I really just wanted to showcase good judo and walk away proud of, of, you know, how I fought. And then just a couple of quick questions about uh, background. I mean, people at home would, would want to know, where in Canada are you from? So I'm from a small sort of town near Toronto uh, in Ontario, Canada. It's called Whitby. And I moved four years ago uh, to another province in Quebec, uh, in Canada, sorry, it's called Quebec. And I'm right now in Montreal because uh, the national tra- team is uh, is training here uh, full time. Sorry? How's your French developing? Uh, my French is okay. I can, uh, I can read pretty well, but my conversational skills are kind of limited, but I'm trying. <laughs> You, you can share some um, learning experience with Catherine Boschuma Pinard, who is yeah. a you know, Quebecois, yeah? Yeah, yeah. No, she's done a good job on learning English, so it kind of puts pressure on me to learn some French. Um, what about the family? Are you the only one in the family who's done judo? Your parents didn't do judo? You haven't got brothers or sisters? Or what's the story? Um, my dad used to do judo as a, as a teen. He stopped when he was like, I think 17 or 18. So he started my brother in it when my brother was maybe six or seven. And I really wanted to go into gymnastics. Like that was, I guess the dream for me, but watching my brother, I, I just showed a lot of interest. So they decided to start me in that. And I was four years old at the time. And from the beginning, I was already looking extremely happy just to be on the mat. So I really, you know, took to it and yeah. So your brother was a competitor, yeah? And he had some yeah. small <laughs> success in Canada, yeah? Yeah, he, he did compete at a few national championships. He did all right. Um, but I just don't think he was too into the competitive lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It's not for everyone. <laughs> um, we were talking about what has gone before, but I think the focus now really is on what's coming up next. So the Budapest um, tournament has, I think, if I'm not mistaken, just been given the go ahead. I hope that my chief is going to wave and say, yeah, that, <laughs> that's the yeah, Okay, it looks as though the thumbs up have to be so um, thrilled yeah. about. Yeah, no, um, it's definitely going to be quite 
different entering a competition, you know, just having trained remotely in Canada, because usually we're training elsewhere for at least four to five months of the year. So it will be a little bit different. I know a, a lot of the other Europeans, they've, they've resumed international training camps or they've done some cross training with each other. So um, that will be something to consider entering the competition, but I honestly feel pretty good. We've done some good consistent training here and uh, I'm really looking forward to just like having that feeling of competing again. I'm really excited for that. I hope I'm not gonna bore people at home by asking you questions that I've asked other athletes, but to two of them really, really important, and I'm sure you, you, you'll agree with one of them is maintaining and managing your weight. Yeah. Uh, that be? So at the, I would say at the beginning of quarantine, I only thought it was gonna be about like two weeks. So like not much was set up in terms of uh, equipment and training and things like that. And I would say, yeah, there is a good two or three months where I didn't manage that in the best way that I could, but I guess I just needed a little break from dieting and things like that. Um, since the summer started though, uh, my weight's been, been fine and I'm back at the, the weight that I normally cut from. So even with Budapest being short notice, it'll, it'll be fine. I just have to uh, unpack my sauna suit that I haven't really seen for a while. <laughs> Happily packed away. Oh yeah, it's like deep in my closet. <laughs> and then the other thing is a, lo a lot of um, fighters. I spoke to Clarice Agbegnenu, um, Malinda Kel Mendy, um, Matthias Kasser, and they all said that the one thing that they benefited from, as far as the break was concerned, was the ability to recover from injuries. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, they had to just try to cope with um, throughout their careers. Yeah. So now an opportunity to really um, get better and get stronger. Yeah. Did you go into the lockdown period or this period with something that was nagging at you or niggling and you were just fighting through? Yeah, so actually right after Dusseldorf, I suffered a small knee injury. It was a small little meniscus tear. And I mean, if things continued and, and you know, uh, the pandemic didn't happen, then that would have been really hard for me to deal with moving forward with, you know, the pressure of the Olympics and, and all the other competitions. So in a way I was sort of grateful to have that, you know, two, three month period to like completely heal up. And uh, there was always other little nag nagging things, um, you know, just, you know, normal, I guess, athlete injuries. And yeah, now I feel like I'm in really good shape. Everything's healed up. So that was definitely a benefit of the, of the quarantine for sure. Okay, well, that's, that's good to hear. And similarly with the, the other athletes, it's nice to know that they also have had that opportunity to recover because you very, very rarely uh, get a, a break that will allow you to get over those injuries, even the small ones like fingers or toes or oh, something. For sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, my fingers have enjoyed the break. <laughs> well, we're going to wish you all, all the, the, the very best. We look forward to seeing you in Budapest, however it is yeah. that you uh, make your way there. I'm sure that's good yeah. for everyone at home. Well, yeah. We wish you the very best of luck. But it's also an opportunity for you to, because you've got some fans out there, you know, who are watching. So if you've got a message for them, here's your chance. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I'm just looking forward I, to, you know, showing some good judo and I hope uh, I can entertain them and yeah inspire them that even though there's been a, a long time off training that you know it, it all comes back around and you don't really lose m most of your judo if you've been doing it for years so just, just um didn't i'm not sure if i said this to you before but from the very first time we saw you uh, matthias was there in miami i think uh, elisabetta fratini we all sat and said um, this is someone special, she can do something because you don't win any of the world titles 
without having something, you know, that, that little bit special. So, you know, we had a, had a look at you and thought, yeah, let's see what happens. So um, we're glad that you've managed to, you know, make it way up there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is off the, off the record. We know yeah. that there are, you know, other issues and stuff uh, going on. But you and I have spoken about this. Focus on the things that you do. You just keep doing them well. There are other things that are way beyond you and outside of your control. You just yeah. hang in there. You keep going. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. It's pretty. I do remember talking to you in uh, in in Miami, and you were asking if I would move up to fifty two kilos or who was in fifty two kilos at the time. And I think it was Ecot. She's still there, but um. Yeah, I hopped a couple, so. <laughs> yeah, and I thought it was really unfortunate at the Youth Olympic Games. Oh that, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> you had to go at 63. Yeah, that was hard, yeah. Because yeah, I, I, beat, I beat the the 57 cadet world, you know, the, the, the German. So in 57, it was promising, but it, it was difficult with the, the bigger girls. Yeah, and... Uh, the, the loss there was to Michaela Polaris, who, yeah. who is this massive, I know. Seven kilo girl now. Yeah. There wasn't there any resemblance to you. And I, and, I, and I kept looking at thinking, this is really unfortunate, the way that the, work, the, way that the weights have worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I went from, I think I weighed in under 60 kilos for sure. And I think that was her last competition in 63. So mm. I don't know how much she was cutting for that one, but I, I felt, I felt as though it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. You take care. We'll um, catch up with you soon. All the best there. Yeah. Are you going to be in Budapest or? Uh, I don't think so because I'm currently in Tobago in the Caribbean. That's where I live. Okay. So we, we had to have the, the, the camera angled this way because if you look outside, uh, it's <laughs> not, not a view. Yeah, okay. The Caribbean Sea in the background. So um, that we have a lockdown here. The, the whole country, both islands, Trinidad and Tobago, are locked down. So no one comes in, no one goes out. So right. I'm afraid I'm going to be stuck in the Caribbean for a little bit longer. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. Neil will be there. I'm sure Neil will yeah. be there. He'll yeah. do the commentary for that one. And Matthias, yeah. the IT, uh, T, uh, IT team. But I guarantee uh, I'll be online uh, watching and uh, hope for a good performance from you. Yeah, for sure. But my favourite, Sasha. I'm sure yeah. he, would, he would have told you that if he hadn't been working uh, for Canada, we were going to take him. Yes. Uh, on commentary. I, I, I told I him. That. <laughs> yeah, I said, this is your job. I'm, at the moment, I'm in your job, Sasha. You know, you just yeah. leave, come here anytime. We'll take yeah. you. He's a good guy. I like him. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. About the name, what's the family name? Klimke, where does that come from? Um, it's Lithuanian, actually. So I think it was Klimkite or Klimkitis, and, and they shortened it somewhere along the line. Um, but my my mom's side is uh, majority it's Slovak. My dad's side is German with uh, some Lithuanian. There's actually Chinese in there. My great grandfather is from China, so <laughs> yeah. We take your word for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, Jessica Klimke, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us. It's uh, yeah. bye -bye from the IJF team here, and it's bye bye to. Everybody at home. Yeah, it's been really nice talking to you. <laughs> Good luck okay. now. Bye.